story stabbed my eyes out. Eleanor sat in the armchair opposite me, two gaping holes where her eyes should be, elasticity of skin, moisture, follicles of hair, all gone. The area around each eye socket was plain bone. She looked rather odd as the rest of her face appeared normal. Her hair was matted. It looked like it had not been washed in a decade or two. Colorful robes she wore when she died had now faded. The vibrance gone, tattered, ripped by where she had been. Her pale arms exposing long vertical slits two inches in length, deep scars. Her eye sockets faced Mortimer as he slept on his rug beside my armchair, facing the fireplace, his head on his paws. Flames flickered, highlighting his fur. Eleanor turned her head and looked at me. She gazed, as if trying to sense the expression on my face. My appearance displeases you, gatekeeper, she said. I am curious. You have just demonstrated that you can sense what I'm feeling. That's why I earned a good living as a psychic, Eleanor said. Why then cut out your eyes? You must have known the visions will remain, as will the extrasensory perception. Eleanor touched her cheekbone. Her fingers became still, taking care not to feel for her eye. I had to dig them out because they hurt too much. Only when I got rid of them did the hurt stop. My gifts were doing something to my eyes. They constantly burn like someone had dropped hot rapeseed oil in them. Hmm. Eleanor placed her hand back on her lap. Stabbing myself with a kitchen knife twice was less painful than that. She smiled, a calming smile. Mortimer's ears popped up, rotating as if listening. A little after nine at night, I was closing up, walking around the shop, blowing out the candles and switching the lights off. I went to my desk at the back when the front door hit the hanging bell, announcing it had been opened. I came out to see a man, short, thin, regular guy. He wanted a reading. I told him I was closing, but he looked so worried that I felt sorry for him. I told him to take a seat at my reading table in the middle of the room. Just as I sat down, his cologne hit me, only it wasn't aftershave. It was La Rive. My mum used to wear it. Memories of my mum flashed through my mind as if I watched an old film about her. Pulling myself together, I looked down at the table to find that he was holding my right hand with both hands. What are you doing? I asked him. I'm working, just like you. Aren't you going to read my future? He said. Ow! I pulled my hand away. My palm was burning. I looked at it. There was an outline, a black sickle piercing an eye. Who are you? I said, pushing my chair back. The name's Dominic Zodiac, but wait, don't look there. He pointed at the window, prompting me to turn to it. As I turned back, he had gone, vanished completely. I didn't hear a sound. I shook my head in disbelief and then went and locked my front door. Ow! My palm hurt. I walked to the sink in the back and soaked my hands, rubbing it vigorously. The mark would not come off. Feeling lightheaded, I sat on my sofa next to my desk. I was awakened by banging on the front door. I got up to see who it was, only it was the next morning, sun was out. My 9am was banging on the door. I let her in and she sat at the reading table. I went to the bathroom to freshen up. Splashing water in my face, I saw him, or whatever he was. He was grinning at me. I smelled La Rive again, looking at my palm. I saw the outline of the sickle piercing the eye. It did happen. Oh God, I'll figure this out later. Got to get to my 9am. I went back to the reading table. My 9am was waiting there. She twirled her ginger hair between her fingers as she watched me. Not impressed. I want to know if me and my boyfriend should get married. What do I do? She said. I offered my hands on the table. The second she placed her hands in mine, I smelt burning toast. I choked. Thick hands squeezed my throat. Eyes open or closed didn't make a difference. I could see him stood there over me in a striped shirt. His hands tightened around my throat. Burn the toast again, will ya? He said. The man's grip got tighter. I 
gouged at his eyes with my fingers. Uh, my fingers got into his eye, forcing him to release me. He stepped away, holding his eye. I got up and backed away, but I still wasn't in my shop. I was at this girl's home. The man grabbed my hair and slammed my head into the counter. Whack, whack. How many times have I told you to open the umbrella to let it dry out? He said. He swung me around. I was still dazed from the blow. He shoved the umbrella into my mouth. End first. K -k -k. I choked again. He kept pushing. I tried to prise him off me, but he was too strong. He pushed harder, harder, and then snap. Uh... Pain shot through my jaw as it broke. He didn't stop there. Whack. He slammed his hand on the edge of the umbrella. Crack. Nothing. Silence. I drifted away. I was dead. Mortimer stood up and moved beside Eleanor's chair. She reached over with her left hand and placed it on his head. Oh, thank you, she said as she stroked him gently. Do you know what it is like to live someone else dying, gatekeeper? Not the way you describe it, just now. It is awful. All I could smell was La Rive as I drifted away. She put her hand back on her lap. I know now what he had done, but before... I thought it was just a string of bad visions. It does happen sometimes. I could go months without seeing a bright future for my appointments. So I thought, let's carry on till I figure out what to do with this mark on my hand. Eleanor held up her right palm. The black outline of a sickle piercing an eye was still there, etched in her. The appointments kept coming and I died over and over and over each one taking me that little bit longer to recover from. The skin on my face began to deteriorate. Then the muscles faded. All that was left is what you see now. Eleanor touched her cheekbone, taking care not to touch anywhere near her eye. I could sense her tears despite not being able to see them. Mortimer placed his head on her lap. She stroked it gently. I was lying on the sofa when I heard the sniggers. <laughs> that reef fragrance was carried to me from my reading table. Dominic Zodiac was back. I went into my little kitchen and took a knife. Holding it out, I strode into the shop area to find him sat at that table, smiling. Hello, Eleanor. Looking swell. How is the little gift I gave you? I walked over to him, but he did not move. Steady with that knife. You might hurt yourself, he said. What did you do to me? Just added a twist to the gifts you already possess. People underestimate the sense of smell when it is the very thing that pulls you in the quickest, deep into your memories. Just like Larive pulled out the memories of your mother, all I did was write that into your mind. You're not human, Eleanor. A human cannot do what I do. Doesn't matter what I am. I have a solution that can make it all go away. Maybe even get your face back. What do you say? Dominic Zodiac smiled at me. I put the knife on the table and sat down. First step, locate a set of rather beautiful eyes. Grey ones to be exact. I know where you can find such a soul. Once you have her, you need to take her eyes. I looked at him as he grinned. His teeth flashed red for an instant. This is my favourite bit. Then you gorge out your eyes and replace them with hers. Simple as. It will all go away. He caught me looking at the knife. He grabbed it but I wanted his hand, and I got it. A hate stripped through me as I saw a young teen skateboarding at the local park. She came over to me when I called her. Slap. I whacked her in the head, dragging her slight body behind the ramp. I laid her flat on the ground and dragged out my kitchen knife from my bag. I slit her throat. Blood poured out. She did not make a sound, and then I gutted each eye out of its socket carefully taking it and placing it in a plastic bag filled with ice. Dig. I did it again. Only this one proved difficult. So I got ripping, following her eye socket, eventually pulling it out with my fingers. I put the other eye into the bag of ice. I looked at her. She was gone. No. 
I shouted and grabbed the knife. Ah ha ha ha. Dominic Zodiac laughed. You're going to stab me in the eye, Eleanor? I dug the knife into my eye. The pain ripped through my skull. I took a breath and dig. I stuck the knife into my other eye. Ha 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 ha. Didn't see that coming. Or oh, wait. Actually, I did. Just playing, he said. I cried. Only blood poured out of my eye sockets. I heard the front door open with the sound of the bell. He was gone. Eleanor touched her fingers together. The visions kept coming. The fragrance of Larive came and went. He was still mocking me. That's when I used the knife on my wrist. She rubbed the scars on her left wrist. What was he, gatekeeper? Eleanor said. You would call him a demon. Why me? Why did he do this to me? He wanted a seer's eyes, I said. The paramedics did not find my eyes in the shop. Eleanor sat back. Her hands rest on the side of the armchair. I watched her as she sat motionless for a while. Mortimer remained still, eyes on her. He went and sat down on his rug, looking at me. Eleanor looked up again. I could sense their fear as they tended to me. The eyes are gone, but the visions don't stop. They never stop. The mark on my hand has opened the flood, and I have to see it all. I can smell La Rive everywhere I go, and that's him mocking me. He reached for the side of the armchairs. I'm ready to go now, where I must, gatekeeper. Whatever you have in store for me will be a reprieve. <coughs> Mortimer stood up. Mortimer will show you the way. Mortimer stood beside Eleanor, who placed her left hand on his neck. He guided her out the lounge. I followed as he took her past the staircase on both sides and stopped at the first door on the right side. Not upstairs, Eleanor said. Not at this time, I said. I opened the door to reveal a Japanese rock garden. Tranquility oozed into the house. Eleanor turned to the door. Oh my, this is beautiful. It is soothing. I go in here and wait, she said. Not wait. B. You will go in and B. No visions, no dreams. Sentience. At its most basic form, an inanimate object. Eleanor smiled. It will be peaceful. Thank you, gatekeeper. The door leads you to where you must go. Not I. But you have a say. I nodded. I saw that. Gatekeeper, if you are willing, I can show you how this house ends. Take my hand. Eleanor held her hand out. No. Wise man, be warned. Darker, much darker beings come this way. To this house, they are much worse than Dominic Zodiac. They know you gather their kind here. Eleanor looked at the ground. Mortimer, please lead me in. Mortimer guided Eleanor through the door. He took her across the sand in which large circles were drawn, getting smaller as they reached the epicenter. Further in, he took her past a rock placed on the line of the largest circle, the circumference of the garden. I do not smell La Rive anymore, Eleanor smiled as Mortimer looked up at her. Deeper, Mortimer guided her past a tower of three oval-shaped rocks piled one on top of the other. It rested on the second circle. Walking straight past the smallest circle, on which a small pebble was set, Mortimer kept walking. He reached the edge of the largest circle on the opposite side of the door. He stopped. Eleanor turned and faced me. Once I get to the center, I'll be free? I nodded. Once again, I could sense tears from her. Only she did not shed them. Mortimer returned and stood beside me. Be at peace, Eleanor. She clasped her hands together and gave a gentle bow. With that, she changed into a bone-colored rock that could fit in my hand. It was on the circle. Tranquility engulfed me. I closed the door. Snap. It was gone. Mortimer and I made our way back to our lounge. I watched him as he circled his rug and sat down. I took to my armchair. A single malt whiskey was waiting for me on the table. Dominic Zodiac knows better than to come here, but he will come. 
eventually. All demons do. I am aware that they plan an assault on this place. Free their kind. Good luck with that. That's what I say. Until next time. See you at 11 next Sunday, where I'll introduce you to another guest. Godspeed. Godspeed.